Hi everyone! Recently, PyTorch Lightning has attracted great attention for deep learning, seeing that all cool people are using it, I decided to give it a try. Personally, I like it a lot, but it has nothing to do with William Falcon being super cute. In this presentation, I will introduce the PL, the advantages of PL, and I will show a demo of converting PyTorch to PL from the official website, and I will show an example of MNIST classification with PL. Lightning is a lightweight PyTorch wrapper for ML researchers. It disentangles PyTorch code to decouple the science from the engineering so that it could be used by scientists, students, or anyone who is interested in machine learning, especially someone like me who's not good at coding or engineering. Lightning forces the following structure to your code, which makes it re reusable and shareable. The research code will go to the Lightning module, and the engineering code will be handled by trainer, and you don't have to write it by yourself. Non-essential research code, such as logging, saving checkpoint, will go to callbacks. And the data, you can use PyTorch data loaders or organize them into a Lightning data module. Once you do this, you can train on multiple GPUs, TPUs, CPUs, and even in 16-bit precision without changing your code. There are many advantages of PL. First of all, it's easy to install. By using PIP install PyTorch Lightning, you can use it. Secondly, models become hardware agnostic. It can run on GPU, CPU, or even TPU. The code is clear to read because engineering code is abstracted away, and it's easier to reproduce. You can also make fewer mistakes because Lightning module handles the tricky engineering part. It also keeps all the flexibility. Lightning module are still PyTorch module, but it removes tons of code, and you can always customize your training validation loop by using callbacks. Lightning has dozens of integrations with popular machine learning tools such as weight and bias logging, TensorBoard, minimal running speed overhead, about 300 milliseconds per epoch compared with pure PyTorch and it has been tested very carefully for every new PR. Next, I will show a demo to convert PyTorch to PyTorch Lightning from the official website. Here is a demo from the official website teaching you how to convert PyTorch to PL. The first step, computational code goes into a Lightning module. Keep in mind, a Lightning module is a PyTorch N module. It just has a few more helpful features. A Lightning module defines a full system. In the init function, there are the encoders and decoders in this example. Then we set the forward hook and defines the prediction and inference actions. In the third step, optimizers go into config optimizers. You can use Atom, SGD, and Extra. Here, the self parameters will contain parameters from encoder and decoder, but you can also specify the parameters to only contain certain layers. In the fourth step, training logic goes into training step lightning module hook. Note that training step defines the training loop, forward defines how the lightning module behaves during inference or prediction. Use self-log to send any matrix to TensorBoard or any other preferred logger. If you set on epoch to true, it will also calculate epoch level metrics. You return a loss or a dictionary of prediction if you want to use them later in training. Similarly, validation logic goes into validation step lightning module hook. You just need to copy paste the code from the original validation batch loop to the validation step function. Same as training step, you can call self.log to automatically accumulate and log at the end of the epoch. Because Lightning module are hardware agnostic, remove any .cuda or .2 device. Override Lightning module hooks as needed. There are more than 20 hooks to keep all the flexibilities. You don't have to write backward, step, or zero gradient by yourself. Lightning module will handle them for you. And now you can initialize your Lightning module. 
By using the trainer, you automatically get TensorBoard logging, hardware calls, model checkpointing, training and validation loop, zero gradient, early stopping. Those code in red can be erased now. Isn't it just efficient and nice? You initialize the training and put data loaders into the trainer.fit. Here it has train and validation data loaders. Sometimes we also have test data loaders. You can also add other functionality using the callback APIs. You can add an MLP layer to fine tune an unsupervised learning approach online. You can add multiple callbacks as well. To figure out how to tweak an input to attract a network to miss a classified digit, you can add confused logit callback. Now it trains as fast as lightning. It can train on GPU, CPU, or TPUs. By setting the number of GPUs or the number of TPU cores, it will be trained on multiple GPU or TPUs. Now I will show you an example of MNIST classification problem by using PyTorch Lightning. Here is a very typical structure of Lightning module. You have init, forward, training and validation step, configuration optimizers. Um, you initialize the model and then you get the data loaders. You initialize the trainer and then you train the model. So to start with, I will give a fully connected layer. Because the input is 28 times 28 image, I will give the dimension of this and then the output will be 10 because we will have 10 digits. And then for forward, I will return um, the ReLU of L1. And then for training step, I will get the uh, uh, data and label from the batch. And then I will calculate the loss, which will be the cross entropy here. And then by using solve x, I can get the prediction and y is the ground truth. And then I return loss. The validation step should be exactly the same as train step here. And then I will define the optimizer. It will be um, Adam here because it's easy. And I will give all the parameters and then LR will be 0 0.02. And now I get the MNIST model and then I will get the data set by downloading the MNIST. Download equals to true and transform will just mm, transform the variable to tensor. And then um, to get the train data set and low uh, val data set, I will random split the data set. Uh, and the train will have 55,000 items and the validation will have 5,000 items. And then I get the data loader train data loader will be batch size equal to 32 and then ball will be batch size also 32 for simplicity and then I get the trainer and then train
Great, it's training. Okay, that's all. Thank you for listening.